All right, we're back. We're back. We're back at it, folks. Another week. We're working on uh, what? What are we working on today? Well, we'll be working on uh, 1971 C10 Spanish Gold. And we're gonna, uh, we'll look at the 68 group. And we got another little surprise or two for you. Um, hot, hot, hot out there. So I'm working inside where it's cool. I got the place all closed up good. I got a lot of welding to do, but I don't want all that smoke in here and I don't want to exhaust all my cool air. So I've just tack welded some things and either I'll get up early or, yeah, because it's too warm in the evening. It's, it's in the high 80s, but uh, I'll get that welding finished up outdoors. A different name. Later. That's it. <laughs> Later. I uh, almost forgot. Anyhow, let's, uh, where are we going to start? Let's start on what I've done with the 68. Last time we talked, let me, let me grab a hold of you there. The last time we talked, we were dealing with this, this stuff. I know you can't see it. This is just a quick reference. The drag links where they connected the axle and this uh, pan hard bar. That bracket that he bought wasn't for this differential cover. It's too big. So we're redoing the bracket, we're remaking it, redesigning it, however you want to word it. I'll take you there and show you that real quick. For whatever part of this you can see over here at the welding bench, let me get my gloves on. My wife will be watching this, and I want my gloves. She'll be watching. You guys are always watching me. And I got one, one of my gloves, one of my blue gloves. Does that bother you? doesn't bother me. Okay, not that I'm proud of this yet, because it's just tacked up, folks. I'm getting me, I'm trying to get things figured out. So the old bracket is from here back. They had it coming in to the center. I wanted it farther to the back. I gotta weld this up, clean that all up. We won't talk about cleaning up. But these angles, these triangles, these gussets, we're gonna call them, there's so many angles here. It has to be flat in the back and then slightly up in the front. I know you can't see in there. And then this side here, that's not even a 45. And this one here is not a 45. And this has to be canted just a little. It was, I think this is my fourth attempt. Now, if I'm being honest, it's probably my sixth attempt. But so what we've done is extended this original bracket out. And the angle of the panhard bar, if you did it flat, it wouldn't, how do I word this? You have to rotate evenly. If you have one like this and you try to rotate, even in your fingers, you can feel pressure on this side. And if I go this way, you feel pressure on that side. They need to be parallel. Not only do they need to be parallel, but they can't be, what's the other word? Parallel does it this way. Oh, they can't be, I don't know angled or cantered this way because then your bolt would be rubbing wrong. So it has to be squared on the ends and parallel this way. Lots of figuring folks. Lots of figuring in there. Caught that. Then I'll get this. I think this top piece I've designed to heat and I can bend around so I have at least one of those sides. I don't know this side too. So I have that same shape for strength and then I'll put in one more little gusset in the back and wrap this around. Weld it all up. Yeah. I'll bring it back to this when I get it done and painted and cleaned all up and welded up properly. I might even do, yeah, I will, some little, I don't know if you can see that one, little gussets off the back of these ears. That's not as strong as I'd like. So I'll cut me some pieces and get my angles and all proper and welded up. It's going to be tough. If you know me, it's going to be tougher than it needs to be. So the next thing we're doing is working on the 71. I got some fun stuff there, so. Let me get you back over there real quick. As you know, when I open this hood and you start trying to look inside with all that painted black stuff, you won't see much, I'm sure. But I'm gonna get, I got more lights today. I got some flashlights. Well, I don't call them that anymore, but. And then I got this, <laughs> this is the new fun thing for the shop. This is our green lizard, the green lizard cam. So today we get the green lizard cam out really written on there, lizard cam. And I say with green because I can tell it's green. So we're going to take the green lizard cam and what are we going to do with the green lizard cam? Well, let me pop the hood and show you. We are going to find out our timing. Now this is 
So if you guys know me, you know I like to do videos on things you can't find on YouTube, or at least I can't find. So uh, when I put on, when the old motor had a harmonic balancer on it. Now those are built with an inner solid metal, an outer solid metal with a rubber band around them. That's, a, that's the way they're made for the damper. And when I bought my new one, from Summit, I don't mind telling you, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it is. I won't call it junk, not this time. But the timing degrees on the one from Summit was about 20, 25 degrees different than the one to come off the motor. So I spent a bunch more time researching, checking, and there were different harmonic balancers from different year 350s. And I ordered the right one. Sometimes I don't. And they sent me what they said was the right one. But, like I said, the degrees were different. So which one do you trust? The old one that could have gotten, you know, the rubber could have gotten dry and it could have slipped on there. That does happen. Or uh, the one from the company where the guy building it, or gal, had a bad day or hated their job and didn't really care. So I have to decide which is which. And these days, I probably trust the old one better. But don't trust either one. If the engine was out of the truck, you could put a degree wheel on it and figure it out. And I probably should have, but well, I forgot. So now that it's in the truck, how do you do it? I couldn't find anything on YouTube, so I'm gonna show you how do you do it. And it worked out actually better than I thought from when I started. So you take a spark plug out. I'm gonna get you over there because you might actually enjoy this part. You take out your number one spark plug. On a Chevy, it's this front right one. You probably knew that. Let's see if I can get you to actually see something. That'd be, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? So you take out, you can't see it. No, no. You take out your number one spark plug down in there. And you roll the motor over, which this motor's kind of tight. And I got a lot going on here in the front, which you'll see in a minute. You can't turn this by hand. You can't really grab any of the belts very good. And you can't get it and turn anyway. And it's got a clutch fan on it. So I had to climb underneath and move it from the flywheel, and climb out, and then climb underneath, and yeah, you get it, like 17 times. But now that I got it close, yeah, we're, we're gonna show you the green lizard cam. So you take the green lizard cam, and I'm gonna show you something about this too. We got so much to show you. And on the end of this green li lizard cam, which here's the camera up here, I put a white stripe, a paint marker, if you will, on the top. I, I don't know why they didn't come that way. I don't understand why people don't do it. Because what that does for you, let's see if we can do a camera on a camera. So we turn on our green lizard cam. I think you can see that. I'm not good at this stuff. Oh, that light's in your eyes. Can you see anything? You probably can't. Let's show you something you can see. So right here it says Edelbrock on that air breather. What do you want to call it? And I'm going to put that in front of it with the white stripe on top. And you are going to be able to read it. Yeah, you are. No, you're not. Of course, while I'm on camera. My point is, if you're looking at something and you want to understand what you're looking at, it's upside right. See the air cleaner? It's upside right. Once you stick this in somewhere and it gets all upside down, I mean, I'm still shining it at the air cleaner, but we're having a hard time. Can you see? I can't see. Oh, there it is. Air cleaner. But it looks funny because, well, it's sideways. So that line really helps you out having the screen upright again doesn't matter there's something to show you so we take the green lizard cam and we put it down in a number one spark plug hole again this isn't super important for this because top and bottom doesn't make a lot of difference where you, where you go little buddy right here so you jam that in there no you don't you just stick it in a little ways until you see the cylinder okay and then you want to see the piston I know it's blurry, but what you, you, these little lines is the top of the piston. So you rotate the motor around until the top of the piston comes up. I'll turn that off. We're done with that for now. And you get it to number one. Now that might be on the compression and it might be on the exhaust. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it will matter later. But you get, being that we don't have an engine stand and I can't, I'm not rolling it over at this point because I know I'm close. 
from putting it together I had on top of that center. You can do the hold your finger over, have somebody crank it, but this car's not ready for that. The truck isn't, all the wiring isn't complete. So we're at top dead center at least. At that point, now I'm gonna try and get you in. I don't know how you're gonna stand because the point is I can't see anything. So you get in here like this. What am I doing next? I already forgot. Oh, get my light. And you shine down in on your, I know it's gonna be bright at times, down on your harmonic balancer and your timing mark. And this is what I'm gonna tell you next. It's fun about this car. Anyhow, and you see where it's at. And my timing mark is only slightly past my zero. So I got it pretty close. Now understand, top dead center, this is so important. Top dead center, and the true meaning is the top dead center of the crank. Now we always say, well, it's when the piston is at top dead center. That's true. But the piston stays at top dead center while the crank turns. Uh, the degrees are different by different motors, but it's about, oh boy, you're going to quote me on this one, about 20-ish degrees. What I mean is, when that piston comes up, I don't know if you can see my hand, and I can't do it with my arm anyway. The point is, when that piston comes to top dead center, that crank still has to roll around. So for a moment, about 20 degrees-ish, that crank can turn and the piston never moves because it hasn't started to pull it down yet. So this is what the important part is about doing this. You roll the engine around until it, the, the piston gets to top dead center. The moment it stops, mark it. I just use a, a white dot, just something to mark. Then you roll it past until the piston just starts to move again, and you mark it. When I say it, I'm talking about your harmonic balancer. Just put another dot on there. Between those dots, right in the middle, is where it's truly at top dead center. So after you play that game and you get it there, you put your mark right in the middle of those two and you got your true mark. So I did all that and that's why I was gonna try and show you how hard this is. If I had a timing light in here, and there's no way, I'm even gonna look through the camera. If I had a timing light in here, there's no way to see down in there. Now I'm gonna point so you have an idea, but it's right there where my blue finger's at, if you can even see it. I don't know if you can. I can barely see it. I can't get a timing light in here and my head and get the harmonic balancer and the timing marker in my view. It's going to be difficult. But I realize now all this, as far as the crank goes, I did my double mark, I marked in the center. It happened to be, I didn't tell you this. So when I marked this harmonic balancer from Summit, it came within one marker, so it's two degrees from my guesswork and double checking everything and getting it all between those two dots. It was only off two degrees. So I'm assuming the summit one is right and I'm off two degrees. Good enough. So the next step in this process, we're almost there. I'll get you back because I don't even know what I'm, what's gonna happen next. I haven't done any of this. Once you think you got it where you want it, you uh, pull off your distributor. Now, <laughs> you guys are watching, so something bad's gonna happen. Not really bad, just seems like odd things happen. Let me set this down. So if I was alone in, under this dark truck, I'm thinking it's right on. But were you guys watching? I don't know. I gotta get the screwdriver. guys or not but gonna help me so I gotta get the distributor off and double check my timing marks what did I do okay. it should be pointing to the number one now you might ask which one is number one I don't mark it white I got a black number one on there because you know me and my black paint all right so I could have had this loose before I got you guys watching it'll be fine 
course, I got all four latched like I'm going to the races. That's three. I don't think that one's hooked right anyway. And then one I can't see at all. All right. Here's the big reveal. Big timing reveal. It needs to be pointed right there. Now this, this obviously moves the whole thing I've got just kind of snug. Here we go. Let's see. Can you see? I hope you can see. Before I pull it off, because I want you to see, I want to look and see if you can see. And we're going to talk about my English maybe later. You'll be able to see. You can zoom in on your, on your phone. I don't know what you're going to confuse me. Here it goes. Nope. It's not loose. <laughs> Here it goes. And... Ah, come on. It's wrong. Of course it's wrong. So how can that be? It's not even off 180. It's way off. Well, I got work to do. <laughs> Darn it. That's okay. I'll get it figured out. I won't take you guys along for the ride. I'll double check all my wires. I'll double check my timing. I'm not going to do that on camera because I got to climb under this 30 times. Double check, check my marks. I don't know how well you can see that. Is that 20 degrees off? <laughs> That's funny. It's supposed to be up here in the front. That's more than that. It's more like 30 -ish. All right, well, I'll do that off camera. We got other stuff to do. Darn it, the timing's off. I want to use the lizard cam. Let's get the lizard cam out for one more fun thing that I should have done before I turned the camera on. You know, that way I know what's going on before you do. Do you know what we're gonna do? Yeah. We're gonna do it. Now, this truck was running and driving when I got it. Well, I say running and driving. You could drive around the yard, I guess. But I want to see what's in here. I haven't grown it now for another two years, so that didn't help anything. But I'm curious how much work I'm gonna do to this tank. I'm gonna use this tank. And I don't know, I'm not gonna take it out and run rocks through it unless I have to. So there's that white line to give me an idea. Not the top and bottom really matters. I don't know if you guys can see that. Funny that light works, but all right. Is that a good spot for you? Well, as good as it's gonna be. Let's see what we got down in the tank. Hmm. So far dark. Okay. I'm gonna dip that right down in the bottom. Well, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it didn't look great. What, what's that down in there? Can you see that? Is it just gasoline? I don't know, but I'm not fond of it. Let's, let's see if we got down in the gas. Oh, I got a little farther. That's looking crustier. I'm, I'm going to show you when I get there. Looking crustier than I thought. No. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't look clean, does it? Well, I don't think there's any gas in it. No, but look at the garbage I brought up on my camera. Wonderful. Well, that wasn't what I wanted either. I'm going to take one more look in there, but right now I'm not too excited about it. I got my camera cleaned off. Let's try it again. I shined a flashlight in there a long time ago. It didn't look that bad. Come on, show me something. This was supposed to be fun. <laughs> Are we having fun? Now my camera's stuck. Come on, nobody else has this problem. All right, I guess it's staying in there for a minute. We're going to look right here under the neck. And I got, I got nothing. Oh, there's some daylight. Well, that part don't look bad. Oh, I think I'm looking at the side. The sides are good. The sides are good. I think that's the bottom. That's got some got some garbage in there. Definitely. I don't know, the camera's bouncing around, but I don't can you see it? It's looking it's not looking good. 
All right, well, this is fancy. I'm glad I got spent the money buying this thing. I can see a little bit, but I'll show you my old, old guy tricks. Got a little more garbage on it. So that's how you do it with Lizard King. Okay, this is how I've always done it. You tape a paper towel on some kind of stick or route or whatever you got, something clean preferably. Now you roll it, just whatever way you want. I pick counterclockwise. And when I get it in there, I'll roll it around clockwise and try and wipe this around the bottom and see what we get out of it. Now a totally dry tank, this probably wouldn't work. You could wet the paper towel a little bit with gasoline and get a pretty good idea what's going on. You want to tape it on good enough that you don't lose it in your tank. No? I don't feel nothing gummy. I don't feel any rusty on the bottom. It seems all right. Come on, don't, don't make a fool out of it. There you go. Let's see what we got out of this. Well, it looks completely dry. No, it's not completely dry. There's some gas. It smells like gas. Eh, a little bit of stuff, but it ain't terrible. Come on. Do this to your new vehicle and see if I'm not brand new, but a 10 year old vehicle, I'll bet you it'd be just as bad. Get one more little wipe on. I don't want to mess up the float or anything in there. I just flush that out if it were me. It is me. It's probably what I'm going to do. It really, it's smooth in there. I mean, it, it ain't crusty or nothing. Wobbled it around enough. This is our the final. Which way did I go? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Must have been clockwise. <laughs> Come on. All right. This is the total the total deal. Rubbing it around good. It's a little garbage, but it should. It's not just covered with rust. It's just sediment, silty. I'm okay with that. A good flush. Good flush will get rid of that. So there's your. There's your lizard cam. I got more information out of this paper towel on a brake line than anything else. All right, I got more for you. Let me take care of this stuff. Okay, let me take you inside the truck. If you remember and you watched last week's show, you'll know about cup holders. Now, I didn't get a lot of views on cup holders, but hey, it's not about views. It's about helping people out that want to know how to do some things and haven't done it. So you can see my cup holders right there. I'll tell you how that happened, but I got the dash in the truck. Um, it was all, in, actually it was in my 72 and I tested it all out so all the gauges are working good. I finally got the radio completely tightened up, the knobs all on proper and everything. And then cup holders. So. I ended up going with the Silverado cup holders and I put them right up tight to the seat so there's no gap. Yeah, I had to do that twice. No, I ain't going to fit to you. So it goes right to the seat. You don't have any gap here. They're in well. They're sturdy. Not going anywhere. All I had to do is take two angle iron. Well, they were aluminum. So two angle aluminums under each one of these pockets. And there's a small bubble in the bottom of these pockets so you can put a bolt through it. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but you can put a bolt through it and your cup won't wobble on that bolt because it's crowned anyway. So it's in there, hooked to the seat. So when you slide the seat forward and backwards, it's always with you. My wife drives it if I drive it or whatever. So that's the cup holders. We're getting her together. It's getting closer every day. Good stuff. Good stuff. Seats all in. My one seat belt. I know. I haven't bought the other one yet. The other thing I didn't tell you, maybe you can tell in the shop. It's echoey in the shop. Let's do this real quick. Just take a second. So we get in the truck, and I close the door, so bang. Now, listen to my voice in here. It almost sounds like I'm in some kind of, I don't know, soundproof booth. It is, let's see, that focused? I think it's the headliner that helps. And that felt we put behind the seats, that didn't hurt. And all the carpet, including kick panels, you can't see, really, really dead in the sound. All right, we're back out in front of the 71. And what we got to do now is check 
Let's just get this part of the startup procedure for me. I still have to get the fuel pump in and the fuel filter and make my lines and brackets for that. It's gonna take a little time, but that's coming off. But I have to make sure this Holly Sniper, that you basically can't see when the air cleaner's on there, it looks like a carburetor. There's no extra wires hanging anywhere. I don't understand, I watched on YouTube and people talk about wires just everywhere and they can't seem to clean them up. I don't have any wires. I mean, this is hoses, this is cable, this is original truck wires. Um, this, this is only a, a temp wire. Well, the truck had a temperature wire there before. I just have that one hidden. So that's not even an extra wire. Um, I, I don't understand. Wires were no trouble for me anyway. I've got to get this to wide open throttle when I push the pedal to wide open throttle. Now the book will tell you as long as the butterfly is open to 80% or more, that's acceptable. But not to me. They need to be straight up and down, wide open, when the pedal is depressed to the floor. And I don't mean like smash through the carpet as hard as you can. Just when you push it full throttle, these should be completely open. How I do that is I get a stick or a rod or something that's a length of the throttle to the seat. Prop it in there, then I come out and look. So we're going to give it a look-see and see how my linkage is. Now, I just did all this by feel and... You remember that from other videos. If not, you can go back and watch them about breaking that nut off. And I, I didn't figure it would even be close. So I know at least now it's you know it's close, but I can't get inside with a pedal and out here, so let me get a stick. I got the throttle down. Let's get in there and see what we got. I need a flashlight. Can you see in there? Well, <laughs> it slipped off. But I believe it was completely wide open. Cool. Well, something went really good with that today. I still got to figure out that timing back in there. So that's what I'm working on this week. We'll see you guys again soon. That's it. We're done. Take care. Goodbye. Appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Can we turn this thing off this week? How many times are we going to try? One, two, three. Okay, that's four. Let's do something else. <clears throat> Don't forget, we've got more lizard cam to come. I should give you a little sneak peek of what's going on here, Tim, when I can't shut it off. I'm going to start doing that for you guys and waiting around. Waiting for me to turn this thing on. I don't know where nothing's at. I'll give you a little tidbits at the end from now on. All right, that's next time. Next week.